Our second speaker this afternoon is Rhonda Galberley, who also has an Order of Australia, which was awarded in 1991. And I think probably the best way of describing her is as a long-term disability activist and agent of social change. She's been the CEO of some key organisations during her career that have made some key differences in Victoria and nationally. She was CEO of VCOS, the Victorian Health Promotion Foundation, Our Community and the Maya Foundation. She was also the founding managing director of what is now the Nossel Institute at the University of Melbourne. She holds honorary doctorate degrees from the University of Melbourne and from La Trobe University. She's the previous chair of the Disability Advisory Council in Victoria and the current chair of the National People with Disability and Carers Council that was responsible for the shutout report, which <coughs> was another significant pusher along the way for the Productivity Commission um, reference. She's a member now of the Independent Advisory Panel for the Productivity Commission Inquiry, and so has been very involved in advising around that. So, over to you, Rhonda. Thank you, Chris. Look, I'm, to, I'm going to outline a couple of challenges that I think we've got um, around this idea for a national disability insurance scheme. Um, can we turn this down a little bit? It's sort of echoing, I don't know. Yeah, that's, if we could just turn the mic down, it's sort of coming back on my ears, thanks. And um, the first challenge, I think, is the, the way in which the $6.3 billion has been greeted inside what I would call the family. And the family really are people with disabilities and their movement, their, their organisations, service delivery organisations and carer organisations. And it's interesting that in going around um, talking about the National Disability Insurance Scheme, the numbers of people who will speak out and say, yeah, but how can we afford it? How can we afford 6.3 billion? Like, that's a lot of money. And as Bruce has said, if you look at it compared with other expenditures that are just um, undertaken in commitments all the time, if you look at it compared with the total expenditure by the Australian government of well over $300 billion a year, if you look at it from the point of view um, of your average corporate going in to negotiate with government about funding for something where it's really, you know, why aren't we spending this? When will we? I mean, I think it actually points to an inner, the inner family view of disability as being very low down. Like, the, the, in, the, the, in, the unhappiness um, with what's delivered is, is absolutely palpable and has come out right through the inquiry and into a Productivity Commission report. But the apology um, for it being around this sort of money, I think, is one of the challenges we face that somehow we have to get our act together inside the family to say, yes, 6.3 billion and when's it coming? Not, gee, it's a lot of money for the treasurer to find. Um, we have to sort of get the mindset um, that the average telco in Australia would have every day of the week. And I think that comes from a history that I won't go into you know, of being oppressed. I think it's the reaction of an oppressed sector, but it can't happen now. Here we've got to this stage where for the first time in Australia, the Productivity Commission, you know, a quite conservative body, not known for its um, left-wing approaches, has come out with a report that says it's shameful, like things have got to change, come out with a strong, and reasonably sensible. I know there'll be critiques of their approach, but, and that's another challenge I think that I'll come to in a minute, but come out with a series of quite sensible, serious recommendations. And we have to inside say, and it's about time now. So that's a challenge. That relates to the second challenge, which is the disarray amongst the family. Um, that for various reasons that I completely understand, you know, extremely painfully, really, there's been tremendous splits between carers and their organisations, 
between people with disabilities and their organisations, between service providers who've been the common enemy, I must say, for carers and people with disabilities. So that's been one point of unity. Um, and these splits have really fueled, you know, a lot of fire and brimstone. And actually, back in the late 70s and early 80s, probably um, fueled the move to independent living and integration. So probably did have a purpose. But now that doesn't have a purpose any longer because splits in the family are a challenge um, in that that's a divide and conquer type of arrangement, which means we won't get up. If ever there's a need for unity, it's now. And in that respect, it's really great to see the National Disability and Carers Alliance that's been built, still a very fragile alliance, politically extremely important, um, incredibly important to Australia that that alliance is maintained because that brings together carers, people with disabilities and service providers for the first time in this country. And we, we really wouldn't be where we are now um, if we hadn't had that alliance. But we need that um, to be also out in the community. Time for the divisions um, to be put aside to get this big idea up. The third challenge relates to the big idea because you go through it and, you know, I noticed in the media that greeted it, there was some shock and a bit of surprise that there are two schemes instead of one, um, that there are issues of the architecture of it that one could take, you know, that one could improve and that hopefully um, those submissions will get into the Productivity Commission in time for it to come out with its final report and take account of it. But basically, our big challenge is, and this is, a this is a challenge I don't know if I know the answer to. I've never known the answer to this one. Um, are we better off trying to get what we can up now, or should we allow you know, the, the critique to inform um, the campaign so that we're not united? in getting up something now. It might not be exactly what we all want, um, but at least it will be something. And I've always been, I've erred often myself on the side of let's get the scheme right and you know, really go for a really excellent scheme. Um, let's, not, let's not compromise. But I now that I'm in my 60s and we still haven't got anywhere in this field, we're still shamefully behind every other country in the Western world, I now wonder whether the challenge isn't for us to do the critique we can to get where we can before the Productivity Commission report comes out, and then once it comes out in July, to get behind it whatever's in it, and to really campaign hard for it, because I don't think that would be the time to offer the critique after that time. The fourth and final challenge, of course, um, is really big P political. You know, we've got a hung parliament. Um, the Greens and independents are incredibly important. Um, the Labor government, we wouldn't be where we are without Jenny Macklin and Bill Shorten. You know, that, that they've been vital to where we are now. Uh, that government, the hung parliament, has to want to carry this forward has to come out um, at the end of, mid middle of November when the government must release the Productivity Commission report with a, um, a, a way forward, not just here's the report, but a way forward, a commitment. Um, they won't have to put any money into it in this electoral cycle. It'll be the next electoral cycle that will require the money. But if we don't get a commitment to a way forward, um, then we're in trouble. We want the opposition to support it but not own it because if it isn't a government initiative, it won't get up. So we want them to be part bipartisan. And that all has to be not with the family. The family of carers, people with disabilities and service providers have to be united. But how the big question is how do we bring this to every Australian? Um, you know, even this room, as great as it is to have all these people here today, 
Um, I still think that if the topic had been about immigration or refugees, I don't know if I'm right about this, they might not be here either. Maybe um, Robert would say this is a time in our history when nobody's active about anything. But this requires activism for every Australian. That's what we had to do to get Medicare up. Medicare was a highly populist campaign that was run where every Australian actually came on board and wanted it. They wanted universal health care. And I think we're a long way from having the world outside the family actually tackle this. You know, and it'd be great to see, you know, one of the, oh, this is me as a 70s hippie, of course, but wouldn't it be great to see a march down um, in the middle, down Federation Square and Burke Street and Swanston Street with, you know, hundreds of thousands of people demanding the National Disability Insurance Scheme. I mean, that's what we want, really. Um, you know, at the very least, come to the Congress about this topic, won't you, on May the 2nd and 3rd, because that's a rally of a kind. Um, that's where politicians are going to see, you know, the numbers of people behind this scheme. Um, but, you know, we wanted 1,000. It looks like we'll have 500. It's an extremely hard slog um, to get this topic up for every Australian. And I think that's the biggest challenge of all because, frankly, even with Macklin, even with Shorten, even with others in the, in the Cabinet, and even with the Greens and the Independents, um, we have to let the government know that they can't not do this. You know, it won't... If we don't get the response we need in November, I think it is a serious setback, really, for this campaign. And I think it's a highly political discussion that we need to have um, that we've never had in this space before. We've never... We've been too busy... Um, you know, really um, pulling each other apart and we need to now unite in a highly political um, discussion. This should be a number one political topic in Australia. Thank you. I think that's really interesting. We almost got an opinion piece in The Age today but it got misplaced by what was happening with the army. So it's hard slog getting high profile for disability issues 